Hi friends, welcome to my new educational platform. Here, the main aim of this uh, lecture is to make the subject or concept as easy as possible that you can able to understand whether you meant for that subject or not. But the second, uh, that is secondary. But the main thing is you have to understand the concept. So the my videos is mainly useful for the people who are preparing for the competitive examinations and at the same time the students. So which are related to that concept. So I will deal with the current affairs, general issues and subject related also so, uh, like social background and uh, biology background. So each and every topic in every video I will explain the things in an easy manner. So with the help of the mind maps, so I will explain. So because of that mind maps, what it happens that you can able to understand the concept easily. If you understand the concept, then you can get a good knowledge in the subject also. So today let's start our session. Today our topic is human cells and cloning. So we have to know the first uh, what are the basic uh, basic knowledge about human cells. After that we have to understand the concept of cloning. So basic we have to know, understand the first human cells. After that with the help of these human cells how the cloning will take place. Already we know that what is the meaning of a cloning. Cloning means nothing but to reproduce the to reproduce the same identical person or animal so as it is replica so this concept we can discuss later after the completion of the basic concept of human cells so already we know that our body is completely filled with cells okay now so each and every part of the body is completely filled with a cell for example, the wall is completely filled with the bricks. Without the bricks, there is a no wall. Like that, our body is completely filled with the cells. Without the cells, there is no body. So, and we have different types of cells. For example, skin cells we have, blood cells we have, cancer cells we have, and sperm cells and egg cells. Like these different types of cells are there in our human body. And these all types of cells are categorized into three okay now first of all see human cells already and another interesting thing how many cells are there in human body you know so approximately 30 trillions of cells are there in our human body 30 trillions of cells so so many cells are there in our body in that different types also is there that types are categorized into three first one first one is somatic cell okay now first category is somatic cells somatic cells and the second one is germ cells and the last one is stem cells so our cells are categorized into three somatic cells germ cells and stem cells examples of somatic cells examples of somatics which cells comes under the somatic cells means skin cells bone cells and remaining all cells also comes under somatic cells only maximum our body is completely filled with somatic cells only okay next one germ cells so what are the examples of germ cells sperm cell in a male and egg cell or ovum in female only these cells comes under the germ cells only these cells and next step stem cells stem cells means nothing but it produce other type of cells stem cells have the capability of to produce the other cell it may produce somatic cell it may produce germ cell so no particular example i mean in our body so what is the use of these cells why this categorized why they categorize it so what is the use of these cells means first of all what is the use of somatic cells means it rejuvenate okay now what is the use of this somatic cells rejuvenate example our skin tissue is damaged because of some accident so then what happens after some days the same skin tissue will come and the same uh, skin uh, no different skin will come and the same whatever the previous you uh, lose your skin the same skin will come commit i mean come to its position how it will come means because of this rejuvenate nature this rejuvenate nature will have possessed by somatic cells 
ओके ना रिजुवेनेशन एंड वॉट इज द यूज ऑफ दिस जेम सेल्स वॉट इज द यूज ऑफ दिस जेम सेल्स मीन्स द ओनली पर्पज ऑफ दिस जेम सेल्स इज रिप्रोडक्शन विदउट दिस जेम सेल्स देर इज नो रिप्रोडक्शन सो इन द प्रोसेस ऑफ रिप्रोडक्शन जेम सेल्स आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट नेक्स्ट वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वॉट इज द यूज ऑफ दिस स्टेम सेल्स स्टेम सेल्स इज वेरी वेरी यूजफुल टू क्यूर द damaged organs okay now some organs is damaged and that organs can be cured with the help of the stem cells and it is also help in the organ transplantation also so in the organ transplantation also these stem cells will be used okay so these are the three categories of the human cells so already i told what are the three categories somatic cells gem cells and stem cells examples of somatic cells already i told total our body is completely filled with somatic cells only except sperm cell and egg cell that category comes i mean those cells comes under the category of gem cells so that's why our body is completely filled with the somatic cells example skin cells bone cells cancer cells blood cells all these comes under somatic only next what are the examples of gem cells sperm cell in male egg cell or ovum in female and stems are uh, nothing exact example but it is very useful in the production of other type of cells next uses of this somatic rejuvenate and uses of gem cells reproduction and uses of stem cells it cures the organ which is damaged or it is also useful in the organ transplantation also now this is the basic concept and in this which cells are called diploid and which cells are called haploid first of all you have to know what is a diploid and what is a haploid already we know each and every cell consists possess a structure okay now cell contains a cell membrane cytoplasm nucleus mitochondria like that the structure will be there okay now chromosomes so each and every cell will have this structure okay now so what it have it have c ones showing i'm drawing so this is a cell and the cell has a nucleus cell membrane nucleus and mitochondria okay now mitochondria like that the structure will be there and chromosomes also will be there chromosomes will be in nucleus only okay so first of all you have to know what is a diploid and what is a haploid diploid here c di 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 means two so the cell which possesses two sets of chromosomes two sets of chromosomes and each set consists of 23 each sets consists of 23 that means the cells which consists of two sets of chromosomes then it comes under the diploid two sets means 23 plus 23 46 chromosomes that means diploid cells have 46 chromosomes it has two sets chromosomes or we can tell 23 pairs of chromosomes pairs means two na so 23 pair means 23 plus 23 46 chromosomes like that haploid haploid means nothing but uh, one set of chromosomes it consists of only one set only 23 chromosomes will be there okay so this is the diploid and this is a haploid diploid means two sets of chromosomes 23 plus 23 46 chromosomes and haploid one set is equal to only 23 chromosomes here which cells comes under diploid and which cells or haploid so here clearly i mentioned see all somatic cells comes under dip all diploid cells only why because this somatic cells cons consists of 46 chromosomes in their nucleus so all somatic cells are diploid why we are calling as a diploid because these cells consists of 46 chromosomes 23 plus 23 next all gem cells all gem cells called as haploid cells why it is called as haploid cells because uh, sperm cell contains only 23 chromosomes in males or uh, egg cell or ovum female egg cell will consists of only 23 chromosomes okay na only one set that's why it is called as haploid 
so and the last one stem cells we can't judge it properly because during an embryonic stage the stem cells will be in a position of haploid later because of cell division and later process it may be it will become diploid so firstly it is a haploid and later it will become diploid so this is the basic concept of a human cells so already we discussed it about the basic concept of human cells now you have to understand the basic programming of reproduction this basic programming of reproduction you have to understand then only you can understand the concept of cloning okay now this i will explain with a example now here i am taking a male and b female we have the excel of this female so this excel already have 23 chromosomes we already know that in previously we discussed that it has excel is a haploid because it has only 23 chromosomes and here sperm cell is also comes under haploid only why it is also having the 23 chromosomes then how the reproduction process will start here excel having 23 chromosomes to start the process of reproduction, this Excel required another 23 chromosomes to start the reproduction. Already it has 23 chromosomes. Another 23 chromosomes will come from the sperm cell. So here see, when the sperm cell indulges into this Excel, 23 already it had. Okay now, so 23 plus 23, 46 chromosomes. When the nucleus is getting 46 chromosomes, then this XL will convert into the zygote and after the process will go on and finally the baby will come. So here you have to understand the basic concept, uh, basic programming of reproduction is that XL want 46 chromosomes to start the process of reproduction. So during this reproduction, how the sex will determine? And here interesting thing you have to know that uh, we are getting 50 percentage of genes from the mother and 50 percentage of genes from uh, father 23 chromosomes from mother 23 chromosomes from father so that's why we possess 100 percent uh, genes from mother and father here you have to understand the thing how the sex will determine during this reproduction process that means the baby uh, will be uh, how the baby is a male or female so see here chromosomes will have chromosomes have two types xx chromosomes and xy chromosomes female have xx chromosomes that means it is a homogamet next male having xy chromosomes xy chromosomes because it is a heterogamet okay now here already xl having xx chromosomes here sperm cell produce 50 percentage of x chromosomes and 50 percentage of y chromosomes when this sperm cell went into this xl with the with the x chromosomes with x chromosomes then the baby will be a female okay now if the sperm cell went into x chromosomes already it has x chromosomes then the baby will be a female baby if the sperm cell went into a x cell with y chromosomes then the baby will be a male baby okay now but we don't know which uh, which type of chromosomes will uh, indulge into this uh, x cell because uh, uh, because of functioning or because of programming some programming so sometimes it may go x chromosome sometimes it may go y chromosomes we can't decide whether uh, which kind of chromosomes is is going so here you have to understand that completely the sex determination depends upon a male so females uh, here the female process i mean here the female is nothing so this is how the sex will determine during this reproduction so final topic is cloning so before cloning you have to understand that human cells and basic programming of a reproduction then only you can understand the process of cloning okay now so somatic cell nucleus transfer why i wrote this you can understand after this explanation here see i am taking example malika from malika i collected excel okay now here xl having 23 chromosomes already we know that xl is a haploid it have only 23 chromosomes okay next at the same time 
I collected somatic cell of Mallika. Why I collected somatic cell of Mallika? Because I want to do the cloning of Mallika only. So the baby, whatever the baby in future, that baby should be like a replica of a Mallika. Exact the Xerox of Mallika. That means I am doing the cloning of Mallika. Then I am doing this process. So I collected somatic cell of Mallika. Then what I will do? The next process I will do C once. So I am taking this 23 nucleus of this XL outside through electromagnetic process. So I am taking this 23 outside. So this 23 nucleus outside I am taking and I will destroy this nucleus of this XL. So here no nucleus in this XL because I took outside and I destroyed it. Next what this somatic cell I am taking out this nucleus of 46 chromosomes so here this 46 chromosomes nucleus i took outside so here also no nucleus in the somatic cell so both nucleus i took outside from xl and from somatic cell here i destroyed the xl nucleus and now here i am destroying the somatic cell Okay, now somatic cell I am destroying. I am not destroying the nucleus. Nucleus is there. So then what I will do? I will do. I will include these 46 chromosomes into this XL. Into this XL. 46 chromosomes. So see here I am drawing again. So here I am drawing 46 chromosomes. So then the XL will start the process of reproduction. Already I told that XL required... 46 chromosomes to start the process of reproduction so it has only 23 chromosomes nucleus so i took that 23 uh, chromosome nucleus outside and i included and i indulged 46 chromosomes nucleus then here 46 chromosomes nucleus with xl so then this xl start the process of reproduction and it will start the process zygote blastocyst after that process will go on now this is the process of clo uh, cloning and the final baby will be exactly xerox of this mallika okay now and here this 46 chromosomes is mandatory for the starting process of reproduction so i think you understand once again in brief i will tell i collected both xl and somatic cell from mallika why because i want to do the cloning of mallika so here I took 23 nucleus of XL outside and 46 chromosomes nucleus of somatic cell outside and I destroyed the XL nucleus okay now and I destroyed the somatic cell now I, re I have XL and 46 chromosome nucleus of somatic cell then what I am doing through the electromagnetic process I am including this 46 chromosomes uh, nucleus into XL so xl required 46 chromosomes to start the process of reproduction and here it got 46 and it start the process of reproduction and next and the final baby will be replica of a mallika and how the sex determined means here nothing rocket science is there uh, uh, whom cells whom somatic cells we are collecting either female or male the final baby will be the male or female baby only okay now so mallika replica will come i want to do the cloning of chandan okay chandan male i don't want to do the cloning of mallika i want to do the cloning of chandan then what i will do here also i will collect the somatic cell here somatic cell is very important to do the process of cloning that's why here i wrote somatic cell nucleus transfer here we did that only now we transfer the somatic cell nucleus into the excel so that's why the cloning process here the chandan i collected the somatic cell of chandan so somatic cell i collected so then what i will do the same process i will do so here okay eliminate this these 46 chromosomes nucleus of chandan i will include this i mean i will indulge this nucleus into the excel of mallika then the final baby will be the xerox of our replica of 
Chandan. Okay. And another thing is the cloning process is totally illegal throughout the world. But this cloning process we can do in animals. Okay. Na? So same how we did uh, cloning process in humans in animals also we can do like that only. This cloning is very useful to protect the animals which are in endanger and going to extinct for example bengal tigers are going to extinct what we have to do we have to collect the somatic cell of that bengal tiger and we can include that somatic cell into the female tigers then the bengal tigers will uh, breed will increase so cloning process is useful to protect the animals from the extinction okay so here but cloning process is banned in uh, humans and another surrogating mother surrogating is different concept okay now that is a different concept IVF in virtue fertility those all are different concept and this is a different concept okay now and thanks a lot for watching this video please like share and subscribe if you like this video